When you disagree with somebody, there's no harm caused to them. It's a disagreement, and you're allowed to express yourself. And thank God for people like Jordan Peterson that are not afraid, okay, to say what so many other people are thinking. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. And as always, I give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. We've reached a million subs. I want to thank everybody for being so loyal, for enjoying the content. We couldn't have done it without you. Uh, really appreciate it. You know, we're doing a big giveaway, it's going to be announced pretty soon. But I can't thank you enough. We really appreciate it. You know, without you, none of this would have been possible. I know you have a lot of choices on YouTube. Thank you so much, uh, really, for tuning in on mine. And now we start a march for two million. It'll be a while, but uh, hey, we're still here and we're going to keep it going. Today, I'm doing something on Jordan Peterson and uh, very disturbing. I got to tell you. Now, let me, let me set this up. I know Jordan. I can't call him a real friend. We don't go back way far, but I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of months back. He interviewed me on his platform on YouTube. It was a great interview. He's brilliant, of course, and uh, we really had a good time. So many comments said to me, Michael, uh, we never saw as much come out of you as we saw with Jordan. And of course, he's a, as a master at that. He knew the questions to ask me. It was great because some people, you know, ask the same questions all the time. Jordan was different. He's just brilliant. And then I had the pleasure of uh, attending one of his events. And prior to that, we had dinner. Me, my wife, my daughter, Julia, and Jordan and his wife. And we spent a couple hours together. Wonderful, right? His wife was wonderful. Just a pleasant time. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that Jordan took time to speak with my daughter, Julia, who had some, I think some of you are familiar with, you know, some of the issues she, she had going back about a year or so. And Jordan was so gracious, so nice, and really gave her his time. It was very helpful. I really appreciate that. And then we went backstage and spoke to him a little bit more after we saw his uh, lecture, and it was brilliant. So I really like him a lot. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting uh, Michaela. I interviewed her, she interviewed me, that's his daughter, uh, and she was terrific also. It's a great family, it really is, and Jordan's a brilliant guy. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I got a message from Michaela to sign a petition. We found out that her father was having some problems, Jordan was. They call it the College of Psychologists of Ontario. Very, very disturbing for me. I have to tell you this, I've been following him now for a while. My wife has been following him even longer than me. And she was so attracted to his brilliance, the way he explained things, his take on things, just, just brilliant. And when I started following him, I can honestly say I haven't seen any negative comments about Jordan at all. To the contrary, I've seen comments about how he's been helpful to so many people in their lives, so many people. And to hear that they're trying to take his license away was extremely disturbing. Of course, I'll sign the petition. I think we signed that, I don't know, but if I haven't, I will, because I think this is just a travesty. Now, I have my computer. I'm going to read some of the things because I want to get this right, but I'm going to read some of the charges or complaints against him. And people, I got to tell you, I, I don't know about any of you, but I'm so tired of people trying to infringe on our freedom of speech, whether it be here, Canada, or anywhere in the world, any free nation in the world. You know, and when people are trying to shut us down because we have strong opinions about something, because we disagree with the left, with progressives, with people in power, it's terrible. It really is. And Jordan speaks his mind, and he very well should because he's got a great take on everything. But we're allowed to do that. You know, this is what democracy is all about. It's freedom of speech, freedom of expression, being able to express our thoughts whether people like them or not. And to see that they're trying to shut him down because of this is very, very disturbing. Very disturbing. I want to read some of the things. Uh, this is kind of the charge against him. This is how it started. It says, the College of Psychologists of Ontario 
the profession's governing body in Ontario, because Jordan is a Canadian, appointed an investigator in March of last year to examine complaints about Mr. Peterson's comments on Twitter and the popular Joe Rogan po podcast. Now, I know uh, Jordan had been shut down on Twitter at one point. You know, who knows what it was for? I don't remember, but uh, he was shut down, and Elon Musk reinstated him, of course, right? Like he reinstated so many people, Trump and everybody else. A lot of people don't like that, but I was happy that he did. On November 22nd, the college's panel released a decision. Per images provided by Mr. Peterson, the panel ruled the following. The comments at issue appear to undermine the public trust in the profession as a whole, the psychologist profession as a whole, and raise questions about your ability, Jordan's ability, to carry out your responsibility, his, as a psychologist. This is the charge against him, that he made comments that impair his ability, you know, to act as a responsible psychologist. Basically, that's what they're saying. Now, what are these comments? Now, keep in mind this. This was not a complaint from any one of his patients or clients because Jordan has stopped practicing about five years ago, I think in 2017. So none of these complaints were from anybody that he was caring for. None of his clients, none of his patients, nobody. This is because of comments that he made on Twitter and on the Joe Rogan show. Freedom of speech, can't talk. Here's what some of the comments. He called Elliot Page, who is a transgender actor, by his former name, Ellen, and he used the pronoun her on Twitter. That's a charge. Because he called a transgender person by her former name, or his former name, whatever, Ellen, and because he referred to her as a her, that's an inflammatory comment. Really? That's something you try to take his license for? Let me move on. He called an advisor to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau a, I'm not going to say the name, but it's not, you know, just to call him a name. Okay? So what? We're allowed to express, how many people have called Trump bad now? How many people in government call Trump every name under the sun? People in government, Nancy Pelosi, our President Joe Biden, and everybody else, how many names have been called to Donald Trump? Are they losing their freedom of speech? Are they getting thrown out of government? Are they getting thrown out of Congress? Are they getting sanctioned? I don't think so. But Jordan Peterson makes a comment about Trudeau. A lot of people make a comment about Trudeau. A lot of people don't like Trudeau. But Jordan, because of that, they want to take his license away? Let me continue. He made a sarcastic crack at an anti-growth environmentalist for not caring that their energy policies lead to more deaths of poor third world children. That's Jordan's assessment that this person's policies lead to deaths of poor third world children. He can't express that if that's what he believes. And if Jordan is saying it, it's probably true. Why would you try to take his license for something like that, for expressing his truth? And get this, he objected to a Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover of a plus size model. He said, sorry, not beautiful. That's a comment you try to take a psychologist's license from? That's saying that he's irresponsible in his duties or he may not be able to continue as a psychologist? I got to tell you this, Sports Illustrated has been around for how many years with beautiful swimsuit models on the cover? That's what every guy, look, every guy looks for that. I'm sorry, that's interested in Sports Illustrated. So if they decide to put a plus size model on there because it's politically correct, I think a lot of people are probably expressing displeasure with that. So because Jordan happened to say it out in the open, they want to take his license, that means that he can't proceed as a psychologist? This is ridiculous. It's absurd. What they went on to say is the impact risk in this case is significant, the panel found, because of those comments. They're saying the risk is significant because the comments may cause harm. Who are they causing harm to? Everything I just stated, who are they causing harm to? If you have a disagreement, if you have a comment, if you mistakenly call a transgender person by their, their first sex that they, that they really were, you're causing them harm, you're causing community or, uh, as a whole harm, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It counseled Mr. Peterson that coaching would help mitigate any risks to the public. What risks are there to the public in what I just stated? in these so-called so complaints against Jordan. And the complaints, by the way, are made from, from this uh, office. That's where they come from. Not from his clients, not from his patients.
Here's Mr. Peterson Jordan's response. Mr. Peterson thinks the investigations aren't about mitigating harm, but preventing free expression, and that the process is the punishment. The whole process that they're putting him through is the punishment. I totally agree with that. There's no harm caused to anybody. When you disagree with somebody, there's no harm caused to them. It's a disagreement, and you're allowed to express yourself, and thank God for people like Jordan Peterson that are not afraid, okay, to say what so many other people are thinking. I happen to agree with everything he said right here. I really mean it. You know, I'll be honest with you, too. You know, these new pronouns that we're supposed to use, that we can't call, you know, a mother a mother. We have to call her a birthing person. I'm not going to do that. As far as I'm concerned, when a woman gives birth to a baby, she's a mother. A father is never a mother in my eyes. If there's a gay couple and they're married, there's two fathers there as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm not insulting anybody. That's just the way I was brought up. That's the way I've been for my whole 71 years. Why do I have to change that now? I'm not saying they can't do a good job and, hey, wonderful, they raised the person, uh, you know, the child right. But as far as I'm concerned, they're two dads. I mean, they can call each other what they want. I'm saying my feeling on it. So, and you know, Jordan will probably express it the same way. I'm not speaking for him, but if he does, is that causing harm to anyone? I don't get it, people. Why are we not allowed to express ourselves? I don't get it. Why would you try to take a man's license away because he's honest and truthful enough to say what so many other people are thinking, but are just afraid to say because of all of this political correct nonsense. Let me go on to read this. Which patients complained to the college that he was conducting his craft as a psychologist? All that the college is allowed to regulate, by the way. The only thing they can do is regulate if there are patients' complaints. So which patients complained? The answer is none of them. There wasn't one complaint from any patient that Jordan ever had. None could have, as he has not practiced as a clinical psychologist for over five years, nor did any of the complainants even know of any of his patients. So this is a total politically correct move, okay, by this uh, administrative body. That's it. This is totally a woke thing. It's totally administrative. It has nothing to do with his patients whatsoever. And they're trying to close him down, silence him, and take his license away. If none of his patients were complaining, uh, what psychological principles was he allegedly breaching? Well, again, the complaints against him have nothing to do with his practice of psychology, but were exclusively political complaints from the left about his conservative political pronouncements. People, I think we're seeing it today. All the stuff that's coming out about the Twitter files, we just, released, we just heard something recently that Adam Schiff tried to silence Twitter when they said some things about President Biden or Joe Biden. I mean, these people are not supposed to be doing that. If you're saying something negative about somebody, it's our right to be able to do that. Do you know what freedom speech is? Let me read you the definition. Free speech exists when citizens can express their opinion, including views that are critical towards the government, without fearing negative consequences, such as being put into prison, receiving threats of violence, or in this case, being closed down. What's going on? You know, people, uh, I think we have to really take notice of what's going on here. And you know, to Jordan's credit, he's not gonna go in front of this body. He's not gonna take, they want him to take some kind of a class, I don't know, that he has to pay for. You know, that's gonna, you know, possibly make him not say these things. I don't know what they're doing. To try to make him a better psychologist is ridiculous. He did nothing wrong, and he's not going to take the class. He's not going to do it. And what he said, he'll petition it, he'll take a plea. And what he said is when he goes into court, everything that's going on, he's going to record. If there's a hearing, he's going to record it, and he's going to put it out in the public. He's going to put it on his YouTube channel for everybody to hear. Jordan, up to this point, his first book, he sold 7 million copies. Who could be upset with him when you sell 7 million copies of books? He has 15 million subs across three social media platforms. 15 million. If people are tuning into him, there is a reason. He's helping people. He's having a positive impact on people. Every one of his lectures just about is sold out. I know. I just attended one recently. Sold out. Worldwide. All around the world. He's got a full schedule. Sells out. His lectures are terrific. People are glued to their seats. I watched. He was a professor at Harvard University. He taught his students there and another university or someplace in Canada. The guy's having a positive impact on all of society. 
And this happened within the last five or six years when he stopped his regular psychology practice. You know, he's been accepted all over the world. So what they're trying to do to him, people, is just terrible. You know, and we have to understand this. When the government tries to shut you down, when any kind of administrative body tries to shut you down because you don't agree with the things that they believe in, the things that they're trying to sell the public, uh, we have a real problem. It's happening here in the United States. We saw it with Twitter. We saw all the people that were canceled. They canceled Trump. They canceled, all right, Trump, they're going to say because of the whole January 6th thing, whatever. But when you can't disagree with government or you can't express yourselves or whatever, that's the first step. That's the first step in destroying our democracy when you can't talk. In every communist socialist country, they shut people down. You're not allowed to disagree with the government. You're not allowed to disagree with the popular uh, belief of the people in charge. Can't do it. So that's the first step in anarchy when they're trying to shut you down. I hope you support Jordan Peterson. If there is a petition going around, sign it. It's a shame what they're trying to do, and we got to stop things like this. It's terrible. This woke thing, you know, I love to see people like Joe Rogan and Bill Maher and people like that that, you know, were, were uh, liberals at one time, and they're even disgusted with what's going on. You can't shut people down. We have a right to talk. We have a right to express ourselves. So I hope you're supportive of Jordan. I'll support him all the way. Can't wait to see how he deals with all of this. It's a shame that he has to go through it. I know it's very troubling to him because it's kind of an attack on his character and on his profession. He doesn't deserve that at all. So uh, I'll be supporting him. Hope you all do. Let's see how it comes out. But uh, I have my faith and trust in Jordan. I think he's going to work this out. Now, I told you last time that we're going to be answering two questions from everybody. We're going to try to do that through every video. We'll get to as many questions as we possibly can. So the two for today are... First one, do I ever meet with some of the family members or maybe children of some of my former associates? And the answer is yes. I've been in touch with, uh, with certain, I would say, children of some of my former associates. And unfortunately, some of them who struggled because their father maybe went through something, maybe died in prison. One, one person in particular, his father was murdered, you know, a Colombo family guy. And uh, I've been in touch with them. I don't shy away from that. You know, look, there's nothing that's going to draw me back into that life, so I'm not concerned about that. And I am a Christian. If I can be helpful to somebody, if they look, you know, to me for some comfort or uh, some encouragement or, you know, some way that they can improve the situation that they're in, I'm happy to talk to them about it. So the answer to that is yes. Second question, what is my favorite Bible verse? Well, I have so many favorite verses. But the verses that have had the most impact on me from day one, I mean, they're right here. There's two of them. And they're both from the book of Proverbs. Uh, the first one is Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, even his enemies are at peace with him. Why that verse? One of the worst nights of my life, the first night that I was locked up and put in the hole when I violated my parole, was a bad night. And that verse uh, really encouraged me, caused me to read on to another verse that's been probably the verse of my life, because that was the real pick-me-up. That's the one that led me to start really reading the Bible and getting into my faith, and that's this one. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and get this, he will make your path straight. And uh, I can tell you when I turn my life over to the Lord, uh, he certainly made my path straighter than it was before. Not perfect by any means, but straighter than it was before. So those are the two verses that have had the biggest impact on me in bringing me to the Lord. And uh, I'm a New Testament guy, basically now. I love uh, all the Gospels. I love to read about Jesus. I love to read what Jesus himself said. Of course, uh, Paul the Apostle has had a big impact on me uh, in many ways. You know, we both had a, a real transition in our life from bad guys to guys that follow the Lord. So uh, I'd love to get into that. You know what? If any of you out there really would love to me to get into my faith a little bit more on some of these uh, uh cast here, let me know, really. I mean, you know, I, I, I know what this is about, and I know why we've reached a million subs, and I know what most of my viewers want to see and hear, but if you're interested in hearing something else about my faith, I'm happy to share it. You know, I speak all over the world. I do a lot of uh, testimony uh, in different places, so if you'd like me to do that, let me know. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe, be healthy, 
God bless every one of you. Yes, I'll see you next time.